So let's use an example here of a mom over 40, income 3647 expenses 2,553.34, total debt $154,000, just a mortgage at 3.25%. The monthly payment is $990. Cash flow per month, $1,093.66. We have one debt tool, personal unsecured line of credit, $7,000 at 10.99%. Value on the home, Eh, anywhere from 180, maybe 200,000. If I do nothing but keep paying this mortgage payment, I will pay an additional $81,272.44 in interest on top of the 154 over the course of 27, 28 years. That's how much he has left on the property. So one strategy Instead of doing debt snowball and debt avalanche and, you know, be done in about maybe 10 to 13 years and then I'm almost 60 years old. The normal strategy that we go over on this channel is velocity banking, right? Leveraging that line of credit. Now, if I have a line of credit that's relatively small, I usually don't mind, especially if I have pretty good cash flow. I usually don't mind taking the whole amount and chunking, right? So one strategy is I can just do a 7K chunk at that property. And I'm going to look at my amortization calculator here and, and just to see how much interest would I save if I did a 7K chunk. So... If I put $7,000 in principal on this 154, first month of doing velocity banking, I'll save over 10K plus in interest. And in addition, I lower the balance principal by 7,000. So that cuts off quite a bit of time and that cuts off like over a year and a half of mortgage payments. Great. And as you know, the strategy at that point is to what? Dump all income in, right? Take expenses out. Do velocity banking on a six to nine month basis or less and just do chunking until I'm debt free in about four, five years. Could be less with pay increases and then increasing in cash flow and then obviously increasing the line of credit over time or converting to a HELOC for sure over time and having a much lesser uh, interest rate to worry about. That's one strategy. So just doing velocity banking could be done in about, you know, four to seven years. Seven years being the max, four being like, wow, that's amazing, or even quicker than that. Um, it just depends on that person's attitude, discipline, motivation, all that good stuff. Now, the other strategy is what if instead of me doing just velocity banking, so I could be doing this to start things off, simultaneously I would like to educate myself on real estate. So if I was this mom, right? I would want to educate myself on how to acquire properties, how to invest in real estate while doing velocity banking for about six months to a year of education. Could go a lot faster, no longer than a year do I want to be just education overload. I don't want to go to that max where I'm just procrastinating, where I'm just learning but not doing. So the first six months to a year, we're chunking out the mortgage. We're acquiring a lot of equity in the property quickly, right? And then what I could then do is instead of me just trying to pay down my home, what if 
in addition to velocity banking, what if I borrowed equity from my primary residence, my home? Borrowed equity from the home. So I got a HELOC, right? Let's say I got a, a HELOC for the difference of, of what I owe on that property versus what's left on the mortgage. Right. <clears throat> and let's say I can get access to maybe over 50 plus K after doing velocity banking for a year. Let's say my credit score is going up. So I get access to this 50K quite easily because of how effective I am with my money and I'm, I know my four major numbers, so I'm doing things correctly. So let's say we're doing all this educating, velocity banking. We borrow equity from the home, 50000 and we put a down payment on another home. So we take this 50K and buy a house, another house. Right? We're not going to live in that house, but maybe we could buy this house. Maybe there's someone I can partner with that can help me buy this home. And the options are either I can try and fix and flip this home, or I buy it and I put a tenant in there and it creates cash flow. Right? So I just get a mortgage, or however that works. Right? I'm not super educated on this. I'm just giving you my ideas. Um, but, I, but I get a home. I buy a house. Put the down payment. However this much can buy me on a, on a home. And then whatever the mortgage payment is, I find a renter, a tenant that would pay that mortgage payment plus cash flow. So I would try and get more debt, right? So I'm buying more debt. I'm getting good debt at this point. So I'm acquiring good debt, getting a renter to supply that mortgage payment and have a cash flow. So it's going to it's going to satisfy The payment plus there's some cash flow from that transaction. Okay. And then in addition to all this, what I would do personally is I would move out of my home, right? The home that I've been paying down on, right? And Maybe before I did this move, maybe I move out of my home and rent it out. So move out of my home and rent it out to, a, to another family. Could that work? And then have someone pay my 990, but let's say your home could rent for maybe 14 or 1500 bucks. Right? So now your 990 is taken care of. So no longer is the concern to pay off the mortgage itself. That's no longer a concern. So now my cash flow would go up 990 because I no longer have a concern to pay off that debt. I'm going to leave it alone. And then let's say I'm cash flowing because I moved out of my home and I'm getting a maybe a 300 plus or more cash flow gain from that. And then what I would do is when I move out is I would find somewhere to rent myself, right? I'd find somewhere to rent myself uh, somewhere around this cost or, or even less. Right? Find somewhere cheap to rent. If I'm a single mom, it's just me and my kid, right? you got one kid, two kids, or you know, uh, 
you live f frugal, you live like a minimalist, just live conservative, who cares, right? Just live cheap for a little while so we can build some serious wealth in a shorter period of time, especially from over the age of 40. And this does not require physical work. It's just a way of being, right? I'm living way below my means so that I can, you know, have access to many, to much later on. So now you're renting. And technically, it doesn't cost you anything because since you moved out, your personal property is being paid for and the difference you're pretty much you know renting on your own or the other option is maybe uh, you have enough space in your home to rent out and still live in that home so that could be another option maybe that makes more sense maybe i can rent out a room in my home or the garage or I don't know, I'm just throwing out different ideas here. But instead of paying off debt, we've now created equity in the property from doing velocity banking really, really fast. And we bought another home which can pay for itself plus cash flow, right? And then we moved out of our home or we're able to rent it out or do something that could create more cash flow. So we got cash flow there, more cash flow here. And I still got, you know, my debt tool, whether it's a, a new HELOC that I used. And I'm doing velocity banking on just that of which I borrowed from. So I'm doing velocity banking on that. And I can knock that down a lot faster than I can the original debt that we were uh, tackling, which would take years. This would take maybe a year or less to do velocity banking on, especially if I have cash flow coming from here, cash flow coming from the new property. And let's say I bought a home like below market value or something like that because I have the education. So I bought something for less and put some money into it to fix it up and make it rentable or whatever the case is. I don't know this stuff deeply, but I know this could work with the right education, the right partnership, uh, just a little bit of homework, a little bit of studying the market, because here's what is coming for sure in the next two years. And this is according to Ray Dalio. If you don't know who Ray Dalio is, look him up. He is the guy you go to to learn about when the next market is gonna crash, when the next recession is coming, when the next anything. This guy knows a, a lot, very, very knowledgeable, um, a leader in his you know, field. So he says in the next two years, we're going to approach the next recession, give or take, but it's gonna be a different type of recession. You know, it's um, every, every downturn, market crash, recession, depression, whatever it is, they're all different. They all have little unique differences. So what could happen in the next year is the home values drop. Assets across the board become less things go on sale. Right now, a lot of people are buying, 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 buying. When, you're, when you see, and here's what he says, is that when you see everyone buying, you should be selling. And when you see everybody selling, you should be buying. So in two years from now or less, there's gonna be an opportunity to buy a lot of things because there's going to be so many things that go on sale. And the other thing to recognize is with the millennial generation, 
we're doing a lot less buying. We're doing less buying, more using. We're like a user generation. We don't really like to own things. We're like nomads. We like to jump around, travel. Uh, we don't want to be bound to one thing, you know, so we're, we like to use things and move on. We're like the user generation. Whereas the baby boomers, they like to buy and secure and settle down. That is not translating with young and older millennials. It's just not the case. So you should have no issue finding renters that are willing to rent your property or properties, right? And you're not, you're no longer concerned about really paying off debt. This is a different strategy. It's more so we're more concerned about cash flow. Cash flow is, is always going to be key over everything, right? Because as long as I have passive cash flow, and it's secure, it's real, it's a hard asset, right? If I lose a renter, I gain another one. How hard can that be? Especially if I have a property manager, how hard is it gonna find renters when home values drop because people over purchased in the earlier years, people overestimated, overvalued their assets and now they got to downsize or now they got to move or whatever the case is. And here you are in a position, now you can just start buying and buying and buying and buying, right? And you're not worried about you losing value in the home because if anything, you've got all this equity already in it. The way you're purchasing properties is based on, uh, is by your lowballing the properties that you buy. You're not buying it at market value, you're buying it way below market value. You're buying like an investor, not a consumer. Right? Most consumers they'll they'll think, oh, is this, this is a 10% cheaper. Well, in actuality, investors are buying properties at 66% or something like that of the ARV, whatever that means. I don't know, not that educated. After market value or something like that. I forget. I bought a course in real estate, learned a couple stuff. Um, I think I have enough knowledge to be dangerous, but not enough to take a whole lot of action just yet. But I myself will be in 2020 is I'm going to be really investing a lot of time in acquiring different assets that when things go down, things go on sale, I'll have the cash flow, I'll have the equity, I'll have the capital to just buy a bunch of stuff and hold on to it. And then when the market goes back up, right? When the market goes back up, oh man, um, people are gonna wanna either buy my stuff or they're just gonna wanna rent, right? So I think it would be really, really wise to put yourself in that position. So if you're someone that is just concerned about paying off your debt, great, keep doing it. Don't let someone like me or other people influence you any differently than what your original intent was, right? Let's say you're 50, 60 years old and you're like, Denzel, I don't care, I don't care. I don't care up, down. I just wanna be free and clear from my personal property. Hey, Velocity Banking is going to go faster than any other debt payoff strategy, period. There's nothing faster. Velocity banking, infinite banking. There you go. But if you are someone that's like, hey, I really want to grow. I really want to create a lot of wealth. You might want to look into a strategy kind of like this. I think what it would require is for you to get educated on real estate first. Find someone that talks about this. Find a mentor, YouTube, same way you found me. Find someone, because that's where they're at. All these YouTube guys are talking about real estate. Um, and they're talking about this type of strategy where they're, they're using the existing equity in a property to buy another property 
And then what they'll do is they'll either move out of that property or they'll have someone rent a portion of their home. Maybe they rent a room out or they rent half the home, co-living, whatever it is, just for a temporary period of time, right? And now they've got two cash flow opportunities coming in and that cash flow, they're stacking it, they're stacking it, they're stacking it. They could also be doing velocity banking, I'm sure, right, on one of the properties to get more equity. And then both mortgages are being taken care of by other people's money, the rents. And then now this second home that was purchased by the first home, this now has equity in it because you put a down payment, so there's equity. Uh, and now you've been paying on it and maybe they're doing velocity banking or whatever the case is. They also bought it below the market value. So there's quite a bit of equity in there and they borrow from that and they acquire a third property. And now they got three properties, all cash flowing. And do you know what this does to your taxes? It puts you in a different tax bracket, puts you in a lower tax bracket because now you have investments. So now you can defer taxes, right? Almost pay nothing in taxes get all these different write-offs and you just keep going and going and going. But simultaneously, you are technically building a lot of debt. After three homes, you're probably well over a million dollars in debt at that point. But if it's cash flowing, we don't care. And if you lose a renter, you get one right back, right? Well, however long that takes. You lose a renter, you have enough cash flow to supply to take care of that with your regular you know, income. And you get to a point where you can walk away from your job, educate yourself even more to secure yourself with the next deal, the next deal, the next deal, and the next deal. And you just keep it going, keep it going. And that can go a lot faster than just velocity banking. So just wanted to share that with you. I'm not someone that is super educated on this, but I get the concept to a, to a degree that yeah, this would make a, a lot more sense than me just paying off debt if I have the capacity to handle that, right? And I go over that sometimes with people is some people just do not have the capacity to own debt. They, whether it's their own personal beliefs about themselves or whatever it is, some people just do not like debt, period. And if that's you, then this strategy wouldn't make sense. What would only make sense is velocity banking itself, right? Um, so that's just something I wanted to share with you guys.